Hello and welcome to our last video. I'm Morgan. I'm Benji. And in this video, we will be showing you all of our spatial mapping and visualizations. And this corresponds to the folder in our GitHub called 30 Spatial Mapping. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Like we mentioned in the second video, we have data from the Durham police beats. There are 35 of them within Durham County. And this visualization here just shows the whole of Durham County and then the police beats. These are obviously shown in pink and the whole of Durham County is the black and white. Um, and so from there, we just looked at the percentage of the population by race. So again, this is the 35 police beats and the percentage of the population. This map is showing the percentage that is white only by police beats. And as we can see, it's around 0.4 to 0.6, all of them. Yeah, so 0 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.42. Um, and then going down, we did the same thing for POC. The percentage is around 0.6 for this. And then for population that is any part black, um, around 0 0.37, 0 0.38, so just a little bit lower. And the important thing to note here is that the population of Durham is fairly homogenous when it comes to the demographics. So like the majority of the police beats are all, um, all have the same, like within the same range of percentage of population that is for each race. And this is again, the same map just within like the open street map style. However, we also made maps to show the percentage of arrests per race, and this is where we see discrepancies. So this is the percentage of white arrests by police beat. And as we can see, this ranges from like 0 0.07, so like 7% to a little bit um, a little bit higher, like 48%. Um, but these are not homogenous. And it's also important to note that the majority of them are below the population percentage um, for those that are white. And then this is for black, again, not homogenous. Um, the like this one police beat has 92% um, arrests for black identified people. And again, in kind of the opposite trend as the white identified people we see, that the percentage of arrests for those that are black is higher than the percentage of residents. Um, and then so after that, we decided to make just a few more visualizations. We didn't end up using all of these and we ju were just playing around with the best ways to view the data and look at the data and honestly just making cool maps and getting um, gaining skills in like data visualization overall. So we made some scatter plots. We made this one is the percentage of residents versus the percentage of arrests per race for police beat. So one for black and one for white for each police beat. And then we did a bar chart of the log ratio, percent residents to percent of arrests for both white and black. And then just more, we did a stacked bar chart and this one that got kind of funky. Um, but honestly, they were just for um, just for fun and just for visualizing the data in different ways. And then the last thing is the log ratio um, on the map. So this is basically showing the same thing as the two maps above the one for residents and one for arrests, but it's just in one. So it has the percentage of residents divided by the percentage of arrests. Yeah, so as Morgan was talking about, part of the goal of like this folder in our GitHub, but just generally is to figure out the best way to present the data or to show it, I mean, to visualize it because we're making visualizations so that people can understand what we learned from the data. And then also at the same time to further our own understanding of the data. Uh, and part of the, like, part of the reason we picked to look at beats to begin with is because they're a distinct, they're a geographical distinction that the police make uh, on their own and how they organize their force. And so that's why we were looking at beats in general. Um, and so we thought to analyze the data within the context of that beats, of those beats. Uh, so then after we made the maps that, that Morgan was talking about, we went in and decided to visualize the data over time. Uh, our original plan was to make like a shiny app, a shiny, an R shiny uh, app that would sh allow you to pick what year you're looking at or to pick what time frames you're looking at so you could view data uh, kind of moving across time uh, but we realized that, that actually wasn't we were thinking about it more and we thought that that wasn't actually the best way to make the data um to visualize the data over time uh again part of the reason we talked about this a little bit in the last video but part of the reason why we even want to visualize data over time is to see changes uh we were talking about it in the context of Chris floyd's death uh but here we're just looking at it over the years to see if uh, thing if trends are staying the same over uh, in specific beats over time or changing and if so that would offer us a clue when we would want to go in and do research as to why things are changing if there's a reason or if it's just 
uh, noise in the data, anything like that. Yeah, so like Benji said, the majority of our um, analysis and exploration is just um, looking at the data. We didn't prove any like causality. We were just looking for correlations and basically just the start. If we had more time and resources or like furthering this project, there is a lot more stuff that we would want to look into. But this is just kind of scratching the surface of what we can um, learn from the data that we have. Yeah, building off that, our approach was kind of let's make visualizations, let's run regressions, let's do things that we think could be informative and let's see what they yield and let's ask, start thinking of basically follow up questions that we can ask based off the results. So like Without looking at this, yeah, so like looking at this, if we see it, looking at the map that I just displayed, which is uh, you can see in the in the bottom right here, uh map uh, arrests of black identified people uh, faceted by year from 2018 to 2022 if there are, don't look to be any significant changes though you can see some uh like some counties towards central durham are uh, seem to be having fewer a smaller percentage of their arrests of black identified people over time uh though that's a very small trend is if we were to see some big change like if if over 90 percent of arrests throughout the county were of black and identified people in 2019, and then it goes down from there. Then we would ask the follow-up question, why is that happening? And we start to do research and start to figure that out. Uh, and that was kind of our approach to this, to all the data analysis that we did in this video that we talked about in the last video. Um, so yeah, this is just an interesting map that we made over the years. Um, it doesn't have that many results. But then the next part of this script that you can see kind of in the in the code part of the of the window. As we were basically filled, as we were basically making a new data frame in R that would yield a uh, day night that would yield per beat on a day night map, uh, so that we could graph as Morgan talked about in the last video, uh, the arrests, uh, percentage of arrests that were black identified day versus night, and this graph you can see. Is, it shows more clearly the relationship yeah. than the histogram, but it's showing the same data. Yeah, it's showing the same data as the histogram from the last video, but it is showing that there are differences that it looks like pretty much across the board that beats are less, have see smaller percentage of arrests be a black identified people uh, during the night, during the day, and theoretically at night, the officer wouldn't be able to see the race of the person they were arresting. So this That's does so, show some correlative effect. And actually talking to people who have done more of this kind of research, they said that this kind of analysis, day versus night, is some of the is some of the like strongest analysis that shows that there is racial bias and how police address if traffic stops. Bias. Yeah. Uh, or yeah, that, that leads to that assumption. So we just thought that these were some interesting maps uh, and just generally like we think that what we talked about in this video about our approach to how we're making these visualizations is important and informative. Um, as I said, if you have any questions about the GitHub, you can uh, look in the GitHub, which is called Small Town Policing Accountability Data 2022, or go to my GitHub page, Benjamin-M-Gold, um, or feel free to like email us or any any questions about the data that you have. We hope these videos have been helpful in seeing how you got, how we got from having no data about Durham to having these nice graphs that and, and, and maps that hopefully show something useful or interesting at the very least. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you for watching.